Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Marmoset, and welcome to a new game for a new series. This is Endless Legends. What have we got? We've got a game. We've got lots of content. So we've got the Frozen, Span Frozen Fangs expansion, the Garden expansion, the Shadow expansion, and the shiny and recently released Shifters expansion. So I'm not going to make any changes there because I want all of those. I've not played this game very much at all. Um, there's a little bit of a save file over here where I basically gently poked at the game. I stuck it on the most easy difficulty level I could just so I could learn where all the buttons were and a few of the basic things. So what's Endless Legend about? Well, you are playing the people who live, the civilizations, on the planet of Origa. So it plays kind of like a Civ style game, um, but with an awful lot... Well, actually, it's got more character. Each of the races has their own kind of actual quest and the rest of it. So we're going to head into the game setup. So we are going to stick it on to normal because we're going to play proper. Um, I think probably we're going to go for four different factions. Game speed. I endless. Plenty of time to take a turn. Slow. Normal. Basically, how many turns do you get before points have to happen? Custom factions. No. Let's have a look at the advanced settings on our game setup. Uh, no time turns, no time battles, uh, encounter sequence, normal, play the animations twice as fast, uh, all the victories are on, so score victory, high numbers of points, emanation victory is when you, um, <laughs> uh, so, so all cities, all the settlers are made up of are yours, so absolute victory, expansion victory, when you control 80% of the uh, surface of the world. Economic victory. Have... The most amount of dust. So, basically, if you have a stupid amount of money, you can then buy your way to victory. Diplomatic victory. Um, so, yes. Become the dominant political force. Wonder victory is when you have enough of the wonders. So, there's a quest line for that. We basically, you know, fast got things along with Marcy who, who first built this marvel. Ooh, nice. Scientific victory, which is basically completing tech tree. Supremacy victory, conquering everyone's capitals. Quest victory, completing the um, quest. Now, the quests are the. Uh, each faction has their own particular quest, um, which you could then play on, basically. So, we want a small map. I would like a Pangea. I don't want to isolate myself. Let's pick on the advanced setting, so we want a Pangea. 50% of it, there. number of continents, one. Island odds, yeah, give me a few little odd islands. See around the edges, wrap it round, yep. I want cold hemispheres. Give me disturbed continents. Chaotic. Great deal of randomness and altitude. Let's just uh, put it on disturbed. Content spread regular. Yeah, region size, normal. So, yeah, I'll get onto that when we actually get stuck into the game. Topography. Yeah, just make all that nice and random. World difficulty, um, normal. So the resources are normally spread, the minor factions are normally arranged, the sea value is all the rest of it. Empire spawn are a decent amount of distance from each other, so we don't start too close to uh, We're not going to play around with that one. We're going to select our empire. So here you have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 factions available to you. Uh, I have toyed around with the Art of Mages, who have the magic things. I've played around with the Windwalkers, who are the Elven type, all archery and so on. Now, what's new for this um, DLC are our friendly bat people here. So their main type of victory is the quest, where they basically complete their storyline. To survive the horrors of the Dust Wars, the Allies scattered themselves for cold places of Aurora. Now the Guardians have awakened, they're coming together, hoping to save Aruga and rebuild the life they once had. So there's an awful lot of backstory and lore that I suspect I would get if I played through some of the other factions before delving into the DLC, but I'm just going to get stuck in. Nice little thing about this, you get very, very few units. Unlike games like Civ, where you're endlessly having to spaff out new units or build new forces and the rest of it, with this, you don't need to go into anywhere near as much detail. We have a basic settler unit, we have our seeker unit, um, cavalry, powerful charge, um, our flying unit, and our heavy unit. And that's basically all we get. We get to upgrade and vary these later on. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all we've really got to work on. So, what do we get? Well, for our bat people, the Alaya, we get shifting. Neat little trick on this. We're white in the summer, 
and dark during the winter. So our powers and settles it. You notice here on our unit type, our seekers, in summer it has a greater attack. In winter, it removes the enemy's defense. So you get quite varied things. So we are Breath Orger, Trait Faction. So we know exactly when winter is going to come. Receive pearls, which you use for buying upgrades and spending things to try and influence how damaging the winter is when you pray to Auriga. Luxury alchemists. Ooh, 20 yet boosters, nice. The unit, the other main quest. Shipyard. Alright, so we start, alright, so we get that one automatic. So it's an era 2 tech, we automatically get shipyards. Battlefield symbiosis. Morale bonus, when our units are around each other. Mercurial Diplomats. So it's cheaper to declare... Alright, so cheaper dip cheaper peaceful actions in summer. Minus 20% of the cost of diplomatic declarations. Diplomatic tree, yeah. So we can declare cheaper in the winter and treat better in the summer. We chosen few. Okay, so we're going to get... Um, Wow. All right. So to grow anything is much, 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 much harder. So our growth rate is going to be reduced, and people are going to get unhappier the more we grow. Monk Skyfin, Garth of the Ally. It's a unique expansion for us. Available in these in Sacred Garden. So minus of five approval, but pretty much gives you bonuses to everything else on those tiles. So we'll have to look and see what those. The focus point for the power of the pearls and the magic. Ooh, fair enough. Have a look at that. And then Skyfin is one of our units. Okay, so we're going to select our bat people. We're going to let everyone else drop onto random. I think we're probably going to have to go. All right, we'll stick with blue. I was hoping there was a white trim to go with our white color scheme. But let us start. Move the text of on the bottom. Yeah, you get bonuses from uh, your approval. Which is um, per city, I believe. But it might as also global ones as well. Loading anomalies, loading roads. Intro. You beings, fixed, inflexible answer. Are not they are beautiful Oregon, artworks. And do not see that she, our mother, as her life ebbs low, shall be delivered by the ally. For we who change, adapt, and persevere will fight for her survival come one day. So heed these dire warnings most sincere. For ruin comes to those who bar our way. Love the writing, a little, little turn of phrase. Warnings most sincere. It's a phrase I might start using in more general life. We've encountered a new faction, so with almost immediately within our starting spot, we've encountered these new factions. These are two headed wolf people. So ancestors of this faction were bred for blood sports as wash beats. Rudimentary intelligence and great ferocity. So they, if we were to pacify and bring these people into our empire, we would get this particular unit, which isn't too bad. Um, range, though, I would have thought it would have been um, interesting that it's ranged. Point back power and the rest of it. I would have, oh, free counter. That's, these might actually add short range. All right, so they're basically skirmishes. So they get right up close and then range. So very good potential uh, second line unit. So we'll uh, dismiss that. And have a look at what our starting location. So this is our starting region, Madinav, Madinav of Madinav. Our starting region of Madinav. So the game is divided up into regions. You can put one city in a region, and your city gathers all the resources that are in this region. So far out, zoomed all the way out here, you can see a bit of an outline. So you can see the the art artwork and the trees and all the rest of it. So we've got our little the. Uh, Passive village we came across. That's a part of the pop up turned up there. But if I zoom back in, you can see we have our people. Our Jota's little village is what they are down here. So it's got an amount of resources on it. So this, that border, green line there, 
that line down there. That represents the edge of our territory. So we've got a slightly coastal start to start, uh, go with. So that tile has got black dust. Naturally coin deposit the springs of, from these springs of gold and black that are never anything fuel source. This is really good um, for producing dust, which is the currency. So we've not got much in the way of things up here because we don't have a settler to start with. What we do have is moss pearls, which are an anomaly. Spiral rock peel, another anomaly. More moss pearls. Black earth, another anomaly. And a, and a titanium deposit, all within our almost immediate starting location. So if I push this button down here, we'll see the tile yields. So this has got an awful lot of production. This produces greatly a large amounts of food because dirt field. So that's basically a rocky field. Whereas this is grassland, so it produces an awful lot more food. But woods, that normally produces a vast amount of food. So I think... I am probably going to settle in place because with only a small amount of expansion of our city, we're going to be able to get out to all of these. And the anomalies are very, very good for producing science. And like any of these kind of 4X games, science is what you want. So let's pick up our units. So we have our hero unit, who I'll talk about in a bit, our settler, and a couple of infantry seekers. Infantry, yeah, so sharp sense and block. So let's grab our settler. And we have the option of settling. So, where we all want to find out immediately. I think probably it is just going to be here. We get a nice manufacturing boost and science boost. And we've immediately encountered our neighbors. So, the ardent mages. Good day, man. May the agony make us all strong. Yeah, so we are currently in a state of cold war and indifference. Show me their the location. All right, well, we haven't actually met, met them yet. But apparently, they are very, very close nearby. I don't know if they're, that green line is actually... I mean, it has actually started as bordering them. It would be very interesting. That means, obviously, we've not got the largest map in the world. But if I scroll... Yeah, it does run. So, hopefully, Madanov is not going to become a front line. It would be a bit nasty for our starting place. So, that's our base city. So, let's go and have a look at Madanov. So, that's the main menu, which we'll flick through here. Jotus is the um, people in the local area. So they are currently hostile and could represent effects. Our population is happy, giving us um, from plus 60 from generic approval. And uh, I think the effect of happy is that we get more food, more production, and more security. Security is an effective of how likely we are to get people coming on and poking our stuff. Um, city itself costs us 10 dust a turn. There is five turns until growth. Opens a list of city expansions and improvements. So totally we just had the palace and the city hall. The core things, just getting these things sorted out. So here we are. Corn is for growth. We have a unit of pop, which we can just, rather than allocating them to a tile, we allocate them as two. So we get these things off the tile by default. So these are the city tiles. So you can get one influence from the city core. If you add all of these things up with the food, they would get eight the city tiles. Oh yes, it won, there's four of them. But eight. So that's how that all adds up. So we're producing quite a lot of coin at the moment, which I'm reasonably happy to say, because they've almost all of them do it. We've got a nice chunk of science, which is going to really speed us along early days. And I'm going to focus on growth to start with, because I really want to... The more pop you've got, the faster you can do pretty much everything else around here. So, let's just expand these windows. These are our mili militias. So they're just the very basic units that all you always have defending your cities. They're pretty much not going to do very much, um, unless we actually want it. So we're garrison unit four. So we can actually input, install one of our own limits with a maximum of three militia unless we get other bits and pieces. So, um, we could spaff out another seeker. Um, just to reinforce our starting army and make them just a little bit more uh, dangerous. That would take us 13 turns at the moment. Probably the best thing to do is just sit at the Founders Memorial. One-time construction, sits in your capital, gives you a flat boost to pretty much everything. It's only going to take us 8 turns. We're going to get that out. If I move you on to production, you can see it's going to 8 turns until growth, but that's going to take us only 5 turns. I think I will probably I'll take the growth more than anything else. 
So that's basically a city. We've got no trade routes at the moment. Because, well, Natalie is nearby, but we don't have any trade dealers with those at the moment. So that's the city menu. Right click to get us out of there. So there's our starting city. So let's just biff through these quite quickly, and then I'll uh, move on from there. So this is our, em our empire screen. So we have the list of all our core advantages, our overall imperial happiness, happy influence points as we pick up. Uh, basically, you use that for diplomatic trades and for using these empire plans. So when that pops up, you'll see it. Uh, next, in 20 turns, we get to make some overall decisions on this kind of thing. Getting more influence early days really helps because you can get the kick of these boosters in at the moment. We've not decided in which minor faction to assimilate. We need to pacify them first. Um, we don't have any luxury resources, we do have any stockpiles, any strategic resources. We've got our empire bonuses clicking along here, and we don't have any trade routes. So I should cancel out. So when we pacify these people, we can do it in several ways. We can talk to them, or we can burn their village down. Um, if we talk to them, we get a quest. We'll get more rewards out of the quest in both terms of hero XP and um, the you also get some material rewards. We can then ask them, or basically embed them into part of our faction. Now, their pop joins the city of the region. They can only pacify one at a time, um, not per region, just one per empire, unless you get extra tax, in which course you can bring more in. You also get access to that unit we saw at the very beginning. That then becomes ours, so we can add that to our army, um, which could be potentially quite interesting if they're quite a decent kind of second rank unit. We could stick uh, them behind a heavier unit and do quite a lot of range, uh, short range damage. I'm not going to need to go back pacifying the guys, because I want to know how many more of these um, villages are in the area. If there are, say, two or three more of these villages inside our starting region, then that's quite good, because pacifying these people will give us a significant advantage to our capital. I don't want to pacify and then incorporate um, a minor race that only gives us a small amount of pop, or a particularly weak unit. Next up, this is our Lost City screen. We've already seen this, so we get the range of food, science... Food, production, science, dust, and influence. No luxury resources, though it does have potentially titanium available. And then maybe there is another resource we can go and have a look at. If it's building fires tomorrow, I'm not going to set up an AI and not get anything into the garrison. Research. What are we going to research? Well, because we are magic people, we start with um, sky fins already researched. So we could potentially um, start looking at building um, some kind of ranged... Um, cavalry unit, we could probably pop out next. So, quick look at all of these. Yeah. These things tend to be more economic. These things tend to be, so science and resources. These tend to be actions that your armies can take up. And these are also actually these more passive ones. So, sewer system just improves approval. Um, cheap city upkeep. Search party means when we go to ruins with our heroes, we'll get to know more about it. Parley means we can talk to people, which is quite useful. I am probably going to go for that. And that so automatically it cues them up in the order they want because I want uh, topography so we get anything where we're getting science on gets more science when we build geometric labs center for mythology improves science per person per pop working on it this just gives us a flat bonus to science so start by getting our science out and then we'll work from there the next one look we've got titanium very very close nearby so the next one we're going to queue is getting the titanium up and working which will and then enable us to be able to make titanium weapons and titanium armor, which is going to give us a significant combat bonus off the gate. The next thing I'm going, probably going to queue, actually, I am going to queue the parlay before the minerals, because I want to be able to talk to people sooner rather than later. And then I think we'll run that through and see what we get later on. Um, if we get, this is the uh, extractors for the other uh, special skills. So... We, if we want to use any of these titanium or the glass steagle items, um, then we'll need to be get uh, need to actually be, have a mining for that. Quests not found any yet, so I'll come back to that. Here's our hero, Zykosh Zyos Brightslash. Inspect. So at the moment he's attached to an army. We can also assign him to a city. So if we were to assign him to a city, he would uh, give plus two food. The city and plus one percent and uh, food and percentage boosts based upon um, his level. So he's also a ranged unit, point blank shot, good block, sharp sense, um, boosts army health, a rural grow infinity, more pearls when we find those, plus one experience for finding pearls, shifting nova. 
Oh, nice. We've got a special effect. He can deal, shift the nature, range of three. So he's quite a powerful unit. So here's where the units change up in that you can give them different bits and types of equipment um, to make them more and better and more powerful. So he's already got crossbow iron. So that does plus nine to damage. Whereas this does plus 12, but it's two-handed. So we'd have to din bit uh, lose the shield. So we're basically trading offense for, offense for attack. Now, if I change that out, it's going to cost us eight dust to switch it. I'm happy with that. Um, he's got all the armor out. These are little accessories you can put in it. So this one, improved movement, really useful when you're scouting. Um, sharp sense. So if I drag that on, you can see it's going to cost us 23 dust. And have a look. Sharp sense. Plus 20% of defense against ranged attacks and improved vision means we can see further. Move further, see further. We don't actually have the dust to do that. So I am probably going to leave this screen without making any changes to him. But you can see this is the kind of thing we're going to be looking at definitely later on when we get the opportunity. Here's our armies. So we've got the first Mitsu wing. It's two units armed by Zaiso. It's two units of... Um, Seekers with this guy. So if we want to say take the seeker, this is what they look like. They've got a basic sword and a basic shield and no other armor or plating. So if we go to edit, we can see we've got two options here. So we make them better versus cavalry or better versus infantry. So we'll leave them with the infantry. Unit. But I want my units to have. So all this is just adding um, armor and initiative to my units so they go faster and they've got more defense and i want them to have improved vision sharp sets isn't that much use on a single unit i want to have improved movement so this is greatly improved the production cost and the, and the time it takes to make these things but it will mean that our um, technically a type of cavalry fine okay so they get charge um just make them decidedly more um powerful short and simple so apply so they are now seeker twos now we've got our sky fins so let's have a look at what we've got on there so they're equipped with claws so it's the only option they've got for their weapons at the moment is the basic claws let's put a little bit more armor on them to make them that more devastating and again give them the improved movement now these guys apparently require pearls to manufacture so that's why the, they haven't popped up on our list of things we can actually make so apply so now we've got skyfin to seek this i'm not going to upgrade any bother upgrading the settlers they really shouldn't have got it into any kind of combat in the first place so we can create based on these new templates so if we wanted to put a seeker unit together that was specialized in cavalry units or had different um items we can next up we've got the diplomacy so we know about you let's come and have a chat so we've got no influence so we can't do any of these things at the moment can't even compliment or give them a warning we can't even do in terms of trading or resources because we basically got very very little so it's going to take us three turns to get the public library you know because of the advantage amount of science we're getting out of our capital site um active spies we don't have we don't have the mercy and things so you can if you find another enemy city you can send it you can assign a hero to set to work so encounter the empire of the ardent mages show how the details that notification so the first thing we need to do we're getting the fans memorial up can't build it at the sky at the moment we'll have to wait and see Probably we'll get the library will come online. Or we'll, the library will come in and then we'll set the work on this. Museum of Rega. So we need resources before we can build this one. Legendary building. So the altar of Rega again require pearls before we can build it. And the gift of Garth requires uh, again 10 pearls. So these are district expansions. Uh, these, yeah, they're expansions or district style expansions. These allow you to basically, you put this in, you put them on a tile and they increase the range that you'll see the amount of tiles that your city works. So that's basically an overview. We've not even gone process turn one, but that's time up for this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe, particularly with a new series like this. Um, I've been the Marmoset, and this has been the first episode of Endless Legends Shifters, playing as the Bat People, the Lealaya. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Thank you very much for watching.